Hello everyone and welcome to New Type Advantage. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mr. New Type, that doesn't look like a Gundam. And you'd be correct. Ever since the pandemic started, I began playing D&D with a group of friends. As a result, I then started getting into mini painting. Painting minis and painting Gundams have a lot in common, but also a ton of differences. Most obviously of all is the size. In learning how to properly paint minis, I got extremely intimidated by how spectacular people can paint. Watching videos of mini painters on YouTube really made me doubt that I could paint anything worthwhile. And then I remembered that WizKids slash Wizards of the Coast sell stuff like this. Yeah, that's an official mini. So that's what we're going for. A more accessible display of mini painting for those with either less skill, less patience, a full-time job that isn't being a mini painter, or that just want a good jumping off point into the hobby. So with that, let's get into the first episode of Tabletop Standard. This is a 3D printed mini from Titanforge. Specifically, it's Hilde Robin from the Vampire Hunter series released last year. This isn't sponsored, it's just a cool mini. For this mini, I used the following colors. Citadel Basilicanum Gray Contrast for the darker fabric colors, Averlin Sunset for Hildy's hair, Lead Belcher, Rune Lord Brass, and Rune Fang Steel for the various metallic parts, Vallejo Hexed Lichen for the cloak, Charred Brown, Beastly Brown, and Parasite Brown for all of the various leather parts, Terracotta and Tan were used for the skin tones. Editor's note, I also forgot to add in Reichlin Flesh Shade, Agrex Earth Shade, and Drakenhof Nightshade for the various, well, shades. On to the painting. First, the mini was primed with a gray rattle can spray primer. You don't need any fancy primers or zenithal highlights on every single mini. I start out painting the skin tones of the mini. I hate doing faces in particular, so getting them out of the way first makes my life a whole lot easier. I first start with a base layer of my terracotta. I find that it gives a nice dark skin tone to build off of. Once the skin tones have their base layer, I then layer on top of that a thin layer of Vallejo tan. It's a slightly lighter shade of brown that, once again, lends itself nicely to the skin tones. I also feel that it adds a nice, slight differentiation in between the different skin tones that we'll be using. Finally, I top it off with a thin layer of Vallejo Pale Flesh, another color that I just now realized I forgot to mention in the beginning. With this layer, I don't entirely coat every surface. I try to leave some of the tan and terracotta in the deeper recessed areas of the skin. I mostly focus on the raised parts like the nose, cheeks, forehead, and chin. It gives the skin a little bit of uneven color and shading that makes it look pretty darn nice. Next up is the cloak. Here we start to plan out the large swaths of color. I'm painting the cloak with Vallejo Hex Lichen. It's a very nice, vibrant purple. Purple paint covers very nicely over just about any other color. I base coat the entire cloak, covering all the areas that I want to be purple. Right now, I'm not worrying about any shadows, highlights, or any other details. After the cloak, I base coat with Citadel Basilicanum Gray contrast paint. Here I color the hat, the pants, and the sleeves. The dark gray color adds a nice contrast with the purple cloak. Once that's done, I then move on to the leather details. I use Vallejo Charred Brown 
Beastly Brown, and Parasite Brown for these details. There's no real rhyme or reason to which colors I use where. I vary the colors for the straps and bags so that the leather colors don't seem too muddled and samey. Now I start moving on to some of the smaller details on the model. I first start adding contrast into the purple cloak. I mix a little of the Basilicanum Gray with the Hexed Lichen to make a darker purple shade. I then paint this into the inner parts of the cloak, the collar of the cloak, and around the edges of the fabric. I then start slowly adding in some shadows in the areas that I think need them. Using the same darker purple shade, I layer that into the folds of the fabric, the area underneath the cloak, and in a few other areas that would have shadows, such as underneath her belt. This helps highlight some of the very nice fabric detail that this model has. Next up are the weapons and metallics. I first start with the crossbow, coloring in the main body in a charred brown wood tone. Then I move on to using Citadel's Runefang Steel for the sword, arrow tip, and metal armor parts. I then use some Runelord Brass and Lead Belcher to finish up some of the other metallic details. Now we liven things up with the hair. Hilde's hair gets a base coat of Averland Sunset. Yellow is an easy color to cover up and fix, so any mistakes made this late into the painting won't be devastating. Then I mix in a small amount of white into the Averlin Sunset. I use this lighter shade to highlight the hair, giving it a better look of, of depth and really showing off the hair detail of the model. After that, we start doing some cleanup, fixing areas where the paint is smudged or any mistakes that we find in general. It's also at this point that you inevitably break the model, just like this. As I was touching up the hair, the sword hand snapped off. Luckily, it was an easy fix with some super glue and accelerator. Once fixed, it's back to touching up and finishing details. I do another look around the model for any small details I might have missed or parts that need to be touched up. Now onto the finishing steps. I apply Reichlin Flesh Shade to the skin tones. Call it a controversial opinion, but for a tabletop ready mini, there is nothing wrong with using washes as a crutch. They fill in the details and shade them far better than I personally have the ability or patience to do so. Just make sure that as you apply it, don't drown the model in wash. Make sure to dab up any areas of the wash that start to pool, otherwise you'll end up with some really bad stained areas. After doing the skin tones, I then apply Agrax Earthshade to the leather parts, the metals, and other parts of the clothing other than her cloak. The final shade that I apply is Drakenhof Nightshade, and I apply that to the cloak. The blue shade really helps the purple cloak pop, it hits the recess as well, and it doesn't cause the purple tone to dull like Agrax Earthshade. Lastly, I do another check and touch up the washes where I need to. I apply more wash where I think I need it, or pull up wash where I see that it started to pool. Once that's done, the final step is to paint the base. This base is plain with no other details, so it gets a very simple black base. And there it is! Here is how I painted this mini to a tabletop standard for the next game of D&D. Let me know what you guys think about this series in the comments, and if you have any suggestions for the next one. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.